God is wonderful in his saints, hallelujah, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Children, when you first hear about this or that saint, you may tend to think, well, that's an odd story, and that was in the far away of the long ago, and it wouldn't have anything to do with us, not today. But how wrong we would be. You see, children, human nature never changes, it's always the same. And uh, what happened back then still is happening today. So that means not only if we find ourselves in this or that situation, today saints are rather unusual, or if we find ourselves just in regular kinds of situations, we can imitate the saints, save our souls, get God some glory while we're at it, and get home safe to heaven. Now our main saint today is St. Boniface, the martyr. He's not the saint who converted Germany, but rather he is a man who lived just at the end of the persecutions in Rome. He worked for a wealthy lady, and her name was Agle, and Agle was what they would call today a rather needy person, and she didn't have very many friends, but she had lots of money. And so, because the Romans liked big parties, every now and again she would throw a huge party and invite everybody to come, and there'd be lots to eat and drink, and everyone would be her friend for a while. Now, she was a Christian, but not a very good Christian. I think her family had been in the faith for a long time, and she didn't take it too seriously. Well, she needed someone to be her personal assistant and to manage these, these parties, to buy the wine and go over the menu and things like that. And um, his name was Bonifus. And he was a big, tall, handsome man, nice full head of hair, and uh, he usually drank too much at these parties, and even when there wasn't a party, he would still drink too much, and he uh, wasn't a very good Christian either, I'm afraid. But he was very generous. As they say, he would give you the shirt off his back. He was very kind to poor people and to travelers, too. Well, the two of them were living together without being married, which is a mortal sin against the Sixth Commandment, which made matters only worse. They weren't leaving a very good life. And one day, Agle, in an unusual moment of introspection, said to Boniface, she said, you know, Boniface, I hear that if you bring back and venerate the relics of the martyrs, you could obtain the forgiveness of your sins. And they got talking about that, because at that time there weren't any persecutions in Rome, but the persecutions were over in the eastern part of the empire, near the Holy Land. And so they, they made an agreement that uh, Boniface would go with some servants and lots of money and get some relics of the martyrs and bring them back, and they would build a church and honor the relics of the martyrs and, and pray that God would have mercy on them, despite their leading a very sinful life. Well. Bonifus joked with her and he said, well, what if the relics that get brought back are my relics? And she said, oh, what a silly idea that is. Now go and get the relics for me. So he, he, he departed. But when he went on his trip, he started to think. And I think he must have started praying. So pretty soon he started giving up all drink. He didn't drink anymore. Liquor or anything like that, or wine or beer. And then he, then he gave up eating meat, too. And then he started praying even more. And whenever he saw a poor person, he would give that poor person some money. When he got to Tarsus, which is the city St. Paul came from, near the Holy Land, a little bit north of the Holy Land, well, the Christians, there were 20 of them, and they were being subjected to what they call today enhanced interrogation techniques. And uh, that means they were being tortured. And just as today, children back then, the same thing. They were torturing the Christians because they said they were terrorists because they were against the established order. Just as if you are really a strong, devout Catholic today, a true Christian in a word, why then you could be arrested and tortured too because you would be a terrorist. That's what, that's what some people say in the government today. That's why I mean what I mean. Things never really change too much. If you really take your faith seriously, well, you might get into trouble. Well, they were having this enhanced interrogation technique, and St. Boniface, when he did it, he, he told his servants to leave his baggage at the hotel, and he went straight to where they were being tortured, and he cried out, 
in the presence of the governor Simplicius, he said, great is the God of the Christians. And he said, what? What's that? And so then he was arrested, and he was tortured too. And the thing was put under, under his fingernails, which must have hurt very much. And they was put into boiling oil, but that didn't do anything to him. And then finally he was beheaded. Well, the servants thought to themselves, well, he's a martyr now, so we better bring back his relics. So they paid 500 gold pieces, and they had his relics packed up, and they went back to Rome. And Agli heard about it, and she organized a procession with, with torches, and she went out to meet the relics of the man with whom she used to sin. But now he was a martyr. He expiated all of his sins by dying for Christ. And at that spot, uh, she built a beautiful church, which for many centuries was called St. Boniface Church. And later on, it, came, it got renamed in honor of St. Alexis, the saint who lived under the stairs, which is a, that's a different story. And about a thousand years ago, there was a monastery there which produced wonderful saints, just when the church really, really needed some saints. So that's the story of St. Boniface and St. Agle. Now, the other story is equally interesting. It's about a, 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 a man who was a contemporary. He probably knew St. Anthony of Padua. They were from the same town and from the same social class. His name is Blessed Giles of Santarem. He was Portuguese. And uh, unlike St. Anthony, who gave up the world, he wanted lots of the world. So he got himself lots of honorary church jobs, which meant that you didn't really have to show up and do anything. And he never went to church to say the office or anything like that. And he was a medical student. And he wanted, Giles, he wanted to learn all about medicine. So he thought he would go to Paris to learn some more. And there was a man who was walking with him on the journey, saying some very interesting things. And Giles thought to himself, I bet that that's the devil. And sure enough, it was the devil. Well, the devil persuaded him to go to the city of Toledo instead. And eventually, he sold his soul to the devil. Just as two medical students did a few years ago, Father Fiordia told me about that story in Mexico. So he sold his soul to the devil, and he got all sorts of medical knowledge, and he got to be very popular, and he had a big practice, and lots of money, and he had two boats and a big house in the suburbs, and everything he could possibly ask for, and he was not happy. He just wasn't happy at all. And one night, he had a horrible dream of ghosts kind of dancing on his grave. And somebody said to him, you're going to be dragged down to hell. When he woke up, he thought, I'd better get to confession. So he started towards home, and he met a Dominican father. And he went to confession, and he joined the Dominican order. And he took his vows, and he lived as a good, strict Dominican friar for seven years. Meanwhile, praying to the Blessed Mother to make everything right, because he had sold his soul to the devil. Well, one day, after seven years of strong penance, he uh, went to choir as usual to chant the divine office, and there on his choir stall, his seat in church, was the contract that he had signed with the devil. The Blessed Mother had gotten it back for him, and now he was free. And he became a great preacher, he was very successful, full of confidence, and they say there wasn't a single sinner that he couldn't convert, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's true. Children, these are things that happened back then and they still happen today. So the lesson probably that we would learn today is that we can atone or make up for our sins and sins drag us down and make us unhappy. So let's not let our sins, I mean even our venial sins, not something very, very grave and serious, but just the little sins that we commit every day, they make us unhappy. But we can atone for them. We can give God glory. We can serve our Blessed Mother in joy. Let's turn to her today, this is her month, and ask her, each one of us, to do our part so that we never sign any kind of a contract with the devil. And that when we do kind of get on the devil's side a little bit, ask the Blessed Mother to tear up the agreement that we're always making with the evil one and to serve her son 100%. Enjoy. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.